Well, let me ask you a question. If I came here tonight and I said, hey, everyone, I made you some of my special brownies and I have covered them in a chocolate frosting and, and they are amazing. And when you're done, you can go have as many as you want. And then I said, but I, before I made them, I went out in my backyard and I just got a little bit of my dog's poop and I put in the brownies. Would that be okay with you? Would you like eating the brownies that have just a little bit of the dog's poop in it? Some of you are like, yeah, I'll totally eat that. How much is too much? How much is too much? See, sometimes that's what we do with God is we are giving him things of ourselves, but we're adding just a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and it spoils it. We have become that polluted well, and we need to cleanse ourselves of those things, that soul detox to look at the things that are pure and true and excellent. Now, what does that really look like? Because I feel like we come to church and we hear these truths and we hear, okay, I'm gonna have to clean my life of these things and I have to purify my life and it feels really hard. And in reality, I just don't want to because I'm actually entertained by some of those things. I enjoy watching um, movies that maybe have a few, just a few things that are wrong. Or I enjoy reading a book, or maybe it's the website you go visit. Maybe the website has some inappropriateness, but you're thinking it's not that much. And you think, man, I just really don't want to cleanse myself of that. You know, the reality is, as your parents talk to you about that, as Mark talks to you about that, it's harder than we want to than we want to think it is. To live the Christian life is to ask you to go places that you can't possibly go on your own. It's going to take the Holy Spirit to do that. It's going to take you asking him when it's hard, hey, I actually really like this thing. I don't know that I want to give it up. And asking God to help you give it up. Let me give you an example of something that happened in my life. Um, a few years ago, I was watching a television show, and I really liked it. It was a popular show on TV, prime time, and I'm watching it, and all of a sudden, this couple who's not married starts to have premarital sex. And they're having premarital sex in the show, and I'm still being entertained by it, and I'm like, it's not that bad. I'll just keep watching it. But all the while, I can hear the Holy Spirit saying, you can't watch this anymore. You can't watch this anymore. This is not good for you, and this is not holy, and this is not pure. But man, I wanted to. So one night, I'm sitting there and I'm praying to God and I'm thinking, Lord, I feel like you're asking me to reach the end of myself, like to give up all these things that I think I will like to follow you more. And the very next day, I'm going to Bible study and um, the teacher was teaching and the very first words of, uh, out of her mouth were, when you finally reach the end of yourself, then you'll be ready to be used by God. And God is looking for people who are pure and holy and those who live for him and want to look like him. And he is really good at cleansing us. But the reality is it's hard. And so in that moment, I decided to give up that television show. And you know what? I didn't miss it. I didn't miss it at all. I thought that I would, but it was actually easier to give up than I even thought. You know, sometimes as we think about the culture, it can start to permeate us and it can start to, um, we can start to not even realize what might be a cultural toxin. Have you ever heard the word um, anesthetic? You use it when you go into surgery and anesthetic kind of dulls your senses so that you don't feel pain. Well, in our world, in our culture, we get anesthetized to things that are harmful we just take a little bit in here and a little bit in there and a little bit in here and all of a sudden we kind of dull our senses of what is right or wrong in God's eyes. And God wants us to be holy. In fact, he says that in 1 Peter 1.16, for it is written, be holy because I'm holy. And as people made in his image, we're to reflect him and we're to look like him. This isn't just, um, to be holy doesn't mean just living good. It means being set apart. It means living differently. And we're to live differently in our world. And that means to cleanse ourselves of the things that the culture and the people around us take in. Now, is that going to be hard? Are you going to look weird to your friends sometimes? Maybe. 
Maybe you'll look weird sometimes. But is it worth going to see or going to do if it takes you further away from God and further away from the most valuable thing that there is, the most valuable one that there is? As we think about detoxing our souls and as we think about going through this cleansing process, I want you to just think in your mind right now, what are one or two things that God may be asking me to cleanse out of my life? What are one to two things that may not be helpful or beneficial or draw me near to God? What are those things that maybe culture says it's okay, but it's actually not okay in God's eyes? In Romans chapter 12, we have the verse up on the screen. In the message version, I liked how it read because it said, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize that he want, what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike, so living differently, living separately, unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you and develops well-formed maturity in you. God wants you to look more like Jesus Christ. And in doing so, that means putting some things off and putting some things on. It means cutting away at the old and becoming the new creation that you are. And some of that is cleansing ourselves of these cultural toxins, those things that culture says are okay, and yet they actually cause us to be further away from God. So look at these next two questions on the screen. As you, as you considered those two items that I just asked you, one to two items I just asked you to think through, I want you to think, does, do these things draw me closer to God or does this draw me further away from God? Does it draw me closer to God or further away from God? And if it's further away from God, then I want you to think, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is this book that I'm reading is this television show that I'm watching? Is this language that I'm using? Is this website that I'm viewing? Is it worth being farther away from God? How many of you think that there's something out there that's more valuable than God? Raise your hand if you think there's anything more valuable than God. So no one raised their hand. So that means there's nothing. There's nothing that's not worth cleansing yourself of or getting rid of your life for God. We need to ask ourselves, is this beneficial? Is it acceptable? Is it helpful? Cleansing our lives of toxins is challenging and it's hard. In many ways, it looks like dying to ourselves. It looks like, I really like this, and I'm going to have to give it up, God, and that feels really hard. And yet, as we start to give up those things, we realize that it's not that hard after all. And we realize that it's worth it, because when God asks us to take something off, he always puts something on, and he always puts something in its place. And he moves us and changes us and transforms us and makes us look more like Jesus so that we are holy and we live differently and we think differently. And we don't become so well adjusted to our culture that we forget what God loves. I remember a few years ago praying to God, help me to hate in my life what you hate in my life. And all of a sudden, God just started showing me things, just small things. You know, what I love about God when you come to faith in Jesus Christ is he doesn't immediately just, whoom. But over time, he starts stripping away the things that are of the old you. And he'll start revealing those things. And maybe that's one of those things that you can pray. Lord, help me to hate what you hate in my life. Help me to desire to be cleansed of this. How many of you would want to drink bleach water? How many of you would opt in for drinking bleach water if it, was offered to, if it was offered to you? Not many of us. And yet culture gives us bleach water all the time, but it disguises it and it makes it look okay. 
And so what I want you to do as you go into the next, even the next week, I want you to think as you go through your life, is what I'm about to view, is what I'm about to say, is what I'm about to do, is it going to draw me closer to God? And is it going to draw those around me closer to God? Or is it going to draw me farther away from God and those around me farther away from God? Am I drinking the bleach water or am I also offering the bleach water to my friends, to my siblings? What might this look like in your life? As you go through the next week, maybe it'd be fun to talk to your parents. Ask them, where's a place that you struggled? Where's a place that maybe you were entertained by sin or you were enjoying sin and God was asking you to cleanse it out? What did that look like for you? How did you do that? Ask your group leader, talk to Mark. What did it look like to truly peel this back away from my life? What did it look like to truly try to live a life that's lived differently and separately? Because that is what God wants us to do. And there's glory in that because he will use you in that as you're conformed into the image of Christ. So I'm going to pray for you, and then I want you to go in your groups and have a discussion about this. So let me pray. Father God, thank you so much that you give us the living water, that you give us the real deal. That when we give up the bleach water in our lives and we start pursuing you and looking for you and we cleanse ourselves of those soul toxins, those things that are harmful to us, Lord, that you give us more and more of you. You bring refreshment. You transform our minds. You help us to see things more clearly. Lord, I pray that over these students. It's hard. It's hard to be a student nowadays because our friends are always coming in and and offering and culture offers and it's available on every corner. It's available on our cell phones, on our computers, at school, at home. But Lord, would you just be with us? Help us to live differently than the culture. Help us to want to get rid of the things in our life that you hate and to also hate what you hate. Lord, it's only by the power of your Holy Spirit that we can do that. Amen.